Well, hello, friends. Welcome back to the Castro Valley News live show. My name is Roberto. This is a live show we do every Tuesday, most Tuesdays, from 7 to uh, 8.30ish, around that time. Uh, we start off every episode with something we call the roll call. And right out of the gate, we've got Tiffany with us. Good evening, Tiffany. Jean is with us as well. Tiffany just sent 100 stars. Thank you, Tiffany. This is Tiffany's 76th week. Thank you, Tiffany. And I need to mention this is, uh, yes, Tiffany's 76th week sending stars. And Tiffany is the reigning queen of stars. And happy Tuesday to you, Tiffany, right back at you. Happy Tuesday to Ross. Ross is in the house. Good evening, Ross. Ross just sent 25 stars. Thank you, Ross. Appreciate your support. This is Ross's. This is Ross's 39th week. Thank you, Ross. Appreciate your support. Welcome back. Glad you can join us. Maggie is with us. Good evening, Maggie. Glad you can join us. Hey, mom is with us. Mom says hello, Castro Valley Live News Nation. Today is Tuesday, June. 13th, 2023, by an ad. Thank you, Mom. I love you. Uh, good evening to you as well, Maggie. Glad you can join us. Paulette is with us. Good evening, Paulette. Meredith is in the house. Meredith just sent 25 stars. Thank you, Meredith. Appreciate your support. I uh, have Meredith here on the list. This is Meredith's 12th week sending stars. Thank you again, Meredith. Glad you can join us. Bob is in the house. Bob's got stars tonight. Right on, Bob. Welcome back to the show, Bob. Uh, yeah, the, and uh, Ross says hello to mom. Hi, mom. So does Jean. Jean says hello to mom. Uh, Ross says, missed me last week. Missed you last week. Uh, internet was all wonky here, and they did. There were some up. It was all sideways. Comcast is... Uh, Comcast does, Comcast does their own thing at their own pace. Paulette just sent 200 stars. Thank you, Paulette. And this is um, Paulette's 39th week sending stars. Thank you so much, Paulette. Appreciate your support. Uh, if you're wondering what the stars thing is, there's an icon you can click right here. Uh, you can purchase stars. They do cost money. You don't have to send stars. Either way, it's cool. But the stars thing is kind of a cool thing that Meta, Facebook, whatever they are this week, has set up where you can buy stars and send those stars to your favorite live content creator um, and send them some monetary love. You don't have to, but if you want to, that's cool too. Appreciate that. Um, just the fact that you guys are tuning in is enough love in and of itself. Um, I'm wondering if Don is going to join us. He may have forgotten. Let me text Don and see what's up. Just bear with me one moment. I'll be texting. While I'm texting Handsome Don, Maggie is tagging Armando, Awa, Marlon, Ramona. Um, so many people. Thank you, Mom. And thank you, Maggie. Sylvia now, too. Let me text Don, see if he's going to be joining us, too. And I apologize that there's dead air. Cali Life is with us. Good evening, Cali Life. All right, I just texted Don to see what's going on. Bob, thank you for the 50 stars. You are awesome. Appreciate your support. Bob just sent 50 stars. This is Bob's 42nd week. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate your support. Again, um, you don't have to send stars, but if you want to, like I said, it's, it's a kind of a cool thing that Facebook set up. For people who do go live, you can send them stars, and it's uh, stars do cost a couple bucks. It's a little bit of, there you go, Don is with us. Handsome Don in the house. Good evening, sir. Uh, Don, you're just in time. I'm talking about stars, and there is a little icon you can click here. You purchase stars, send them off to your favorite live content creator. Could be Castro Valley News. It could be, um, could be Spider-Man. <laughs> if Spider-Man went live, I guess. That's such a silly <laughs> example. I'm sorry. Uh, any person who goes live on, on Facebook, you can send them stars, and it's a cool way to show a little bit of love to your favorite live content creator. Um, 
Um, Paulette, notification sound is off. So I'm not sure what you're getting, um, but hopefully um, it's not the notification sounds. Thank you, Paulette. Appreciate the heads up. If you're just joining us, my name is Roberto. This is the Castro Valley News live show. We do this show most Tuesdays. Sorry about last week. Don just sent 20 stars. Don, thank you, handsome Don. This is Handsome Don's 68, 68 week sending stars. Thank you, Handsome Don. I appreciate that. It, it just blows my mind how many times we have done the show. And I know I mentioned this a lot of times. This is episode 216 for um, those of you playing along at home. Maggie, thank you for the 50 stars. This is Maggie's. 28th week sending stars. Thank you so much, Maggie. I appreciate all you do for me, for the show, everything you do in the community, everything you do to support Castle Valley News. Thank you, Maggie. You are awesome. Talking about awesome, Dennis is in the house. Welcome back, Dennis. Dennis just sent 400 stars. Dennis is the reigning king of stars. Dennis has sent stars 75 weeks. So if you're playing along at home, if you've got a card, uh, the numbers are in the Queen of Stars, Tiffany, 76 weeks. And Dennis, King of Stars, 75 weeks. Guys are amazing. This is episode 216, by the way. If you're new to the show, post up a comment. We love to give shout outs to new listeners. We do something. We start off every episode episode. We start off every episode with something. We call the roll call. So everyone listening, post up a comment. We give you a shout out. There you go. Uh, Bob says he's watching the A's on TV. Too crowded for him. Uh, so yes, I'm going to get to the A's in a moment because there's some some new news in regards to the whole uh, Oakland Vegas thing. Uh, but we start every episode with something we call the roll call. People listening post up a comment. We give them a shout out by first name because we we respect their privacy new people get a group shout out but if you are new listening watching post up a comment we'd love to give you a shout out even if you're not new to the show post up a comment we would love to give you a shout out maggie says hello to mom ross is tagging don deloy michelle nicolette cole deanna billy ray and ari hi liam hope you're doing well so let's talk about the A's very briefly here for a, a quick, quick moment. If you're following that story as it unfolds, uh, just this afternoon, uh, the Nevada Senate passed a $380 million bill to fund the A's stadium. Uh, but don't let your stomach sink too fast on that. Uh, this still has to pass the Nevada legislature. Um, and then if it passes the Nevada legislature, it's going to have to be approved by the citizens of Nevada, uh, and it could actually be voted down by the citizens of Nevada. Um, I'm wearing the, the A's colors tonight because I'm showing love. If you are a if you are a follower of the show, I have spoken ad nauseum for my love for the Oakland A's. I was raised uh, going to A's games with mom and dad, mom and or dad. And I basically grew up um, watching the A's, watching Ricky Henderson, um, and and uh, you know my my heart is with the A's, and uh, I think the A's ownership could learn a lot about um, business. Me and they seem to be great with business because they're you know they're they they uh, <laughs> uh, from what I understand they come from money. Um, but I think when it comes to business, I think there's um, a certain degree of uh, loyalty that could be returned to a city. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start getting into politics here. But anyways, um, I wish uh, A's management would, ownership, excuse me, the A's ownership would do, uh, would be a little bit more, uh, take a little bit more into consideration where they're at. Um, I don't want to see the A's go, but I think... We're going to be watching an incredible and interesting story unfold as this as this 
thing progresses. Uh, Eric, welcome to the show. Eric is asking what happened to Sherry's. Uh, they closed. This was a while ago. Uh, the From what I've kind of heard unofficially is there may have been some situation with the lease. I think they may have um, not negotiated or entered into uh, negotiations. That's just the unofficial word that I heard is there was some, some issues with the lease and uh, Sherry's is now closed, been closed for a while. And uh, a lot of people were interested and excited and upset about Sherry's closing. Uh, wonderful people, I've met them numerous times. I've never had the opportunity to eat at Sherry's. Uh, but during our cruise night event, they were very excited for cruise night. They loved the event, they were busy. They, uh, Sherry's had a dedicated following of customers that came back numerous times, week after week. And uh, uh, Sherry's has closed. The, we may have the opportunity to attract a different, unique restaurant company, franchise, independent company, who knows? Uh, let's all cross our fingers. Maybe Tony Gemignani has seen our page and may be interested in Sherry's. That would be awesome if you were to open up that location. Could you imagine how amazing our downtown would be if Tony Gemignani opened up a pizza restaurant at the location where Sherry's is now? Um, if you guys are not familiar with this, uh, Tony came to Castor Valley quite a few years ago was looking at the former Caro's, now Denica's, uh, was interested in, in and kind of looked at the spot and unfortunately the timing was not right and um, it didn't happen. But we do have Denica's and they are wonderful people. They have great food. Um, check out their cookies are amazing. Uh, Maggie says, there you go, Maggie confirmed. She heard it was a lease issue. Uh, there was a weekly meeting there for the Hispanic real estate marketing, marketing group. So it's an unfortunate situation. But like I said, uh, we have a huge, huge um, restaurant footprint that's going to be available for um, another restaurateur, another um, um, franchise, maybe another independent business, I hope, because... Um, all of those scenarios are awesome as long as, you know, you have a business open and people are, you know, patronizing these businesses. But Tony Gemignani, if you're listening, Sherry's on the boulevard is available if you are interested. Just give a drive by and uh, I'm sure you can you can get some, some information. Uh, let's get to the actual uh, show show, show that, that's on tap for tonight. And I appreciate you guys' patience with last week. Like I said, there were internet issues. Comcast came here. Uh, my internet was on, and then it would drop, and it would be on and drop and on and drop. It really was not reliable. So I decided in lieu of trying to do a show, just go ahead and cancel. I could try to do the show on my phone, but that's... It's not going to bring you the quality of show that happens with the desktop here. So thank you guys for your patience. I appreciate your understanding and patience. And we are back tonight with another mighty show for you guys. Don, Handsome Don says, no kidding, he got 17 spam calls on his phone. It is spam season. Uh, it is spam season, scam season. Uh, I have a doozy of a scam to share with you uh, later this evening. This is a good one that I really want you guys to be aware of and, and pay attention to because these scams, these spam scams, these phishing people who are trying to get your information and steal your money, the, the level of the sophistication is just amazing and it's really eye-opening. So uh, but with that said, let's get to the rest of the show here. I have some calendar items and I know you guys are probably tired of hearing me tell you about the book sales at the Castro Valley Library. I'm not tired of them because I love them. I did miss the last one, unfortunately, but I'm going to be at this one. There's another one coming up August 4th, 5th, and 6th. Please, if you like books, if you like uh, treasure hunting, if you like DVDs, um, CDs, all sorts of fun stuff, please do not miss out on the summer book sale coming up at the Castro Valley Library again, August 4th, 5th, and 6th. 
um, Friday 6 to 8 p.m., um, Saturday 10 to 4, Sunday 1 to 4 p.m., $5 per bag. So you can get a bag of books for $5. That's amazing. You know what's more amazing? If you're interested in knowing, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. So these book sales, they are organized by the Friends of the Castro Valley Library. And you probably know this already, but I'm going to tell you again. The Friends of the Castro Valley Library, every penny, every dime, every quarter, every dollar, every $5 bill, every $10 bill that they receive is invested directly back into the library, paying for programs and materials to make our library so much better. So please, if you like books, if you like media stuff, um, let's see, cookbooks, I can go down the list and bore you with all of the things that they have. And I guess I'll do that because they are wonderful. Mystery books, cookbooks, children's books, DVDs, Blu-rays, uh, books that are new from this year that people have read and are passing along to other people, uh, sci-fi, comic books, gift cards, greeting cards, DVDs. I think I mentioned DVDs. They have a lot of DVDs, so they're worth mentioning twice. Mystery books, large print books, magazines. The bookstore at the Castro Valley Library has all those things. In addition to those items will be at the summer book sale, August 4th, 5th, and 6th at the Castro Valley Library. Please do not miss out because you will find, I guarantee you, here, here's my bet. Just bring $5 with you to the bookstore or the book sale. And I guarantee you, you will walk away with probably three books and wonderful CDs and probably a DVD because they are priced so nice there. And um, I am, um, I am, I am so impressed with the amount of money that these wonderful volunteers raise. And they are volunteers; they're a nonprofit organization. So please don't miss the summer book sale that's coming up August 4th, 5th, and 6th. If you missed all this information, I will be bringing it up um, numerous more times during the show because I love those guys. I love what they do there. They are wonderful. Katie, thank you for the 50 stars. Katie, welcome back. Glad you can join us. Uh, this is Katie's 19th week sending stars. Thank you, Katie. Appreciate your support. Let me scroll back because I know there were... Uh, some questions and some conversations. Bob says, uh, when I did the show from the library once, it was cool, especially the water delivery. That's right, John brought me some water because it, it was a warm day. Yeah, the, the, that library life thing was cool. Uh, let's see, Maggie, this is, this is why I love you, Maggie. She loves books. She's a bookworm, read about 12 books a month. Holy smokes, I'm lucky if I get through a book in 12 months. Uh, I fall asleep when I'm reading, unfortunately, but you know, I, I read every night. Uh, Dennis is asking news on the food pantry issue. I've heard nothing new about that. Uh, the Forest Avenue food pantry, I've heard nothing about the relocation. Uh, there were a couple of people who messaged me uh, directly who were interested in talking to Tanya about the pantry and how a potential relocation. Uh, so keep your fingers crossed. Maybe there will be a new location in the near future. Eileen, happy Tuesday to you as well. Uh, Don's tagging a bunch of people. Thank you, handsome Don. Maggie is still tagging a lot of people. Thank you, Maggie. Appreciate your support. Eileen just sent 200 stars. Thank you, Eileen. This is Eileen's 74th week sending stars thank you eileen appreciate your support what do i have next here let's see talk about book sale oh why not hey we do have a new ish magazine this is the magazine that we put out we put out monthly and get a good look at this magazine the size of this because this is going to be oh am i going to let you in on the secret john is with us good evening john welcome to the show John, we were just talking about you. We were talking about the time that you brought me water when we were doing the, doing the live show at the library. Thank you again, John, for being awesome. Michael B. is in the house. Michael B. has been busy with doing articles for the Ledger Dispatch. Look at you, Michael B., all handsome, successful, and wonderful. Congratulations, Michael B., and congratulations to us 
for uh, you joining us again. We are glad that you can be with us tonight. Um, yes, every month we have a magazine that looks like this. Uh, the magazine is going to look different this month, and I'll let you know uh, more about that as that transpires. I'm super excited. I'm very excited. Chris, hey, right back at you. Welcome to the show, Chris. Glad you can join us again. Chris, you're just in time for something I think you'll be excited about. I'm excited about. Uh, we do have a guest that's going to be calling in at 7.30, so I need to um, move things along a little bit more expeditiously. Uh, let's see. That. Let's do this. Guys, ladies and gentlemen, I love news. I love local publications. I share with you all the time the Edible East Bay magazine whenever that's released. And Michael B. has two articles in the paper this week. Send me that, Michael B. I want to see that. I want to see your name and your byline. Please do so. I'll, I will reimburse you for postage. You know my address. I want to bring your attention to another wonderful publication here in our community. This is the Olympian School Newspaper. This comes out, I think, quarterly. And I only know about this because, well, I've, I've done some stories about some of the students and I've spoke to their class. But this publication, when it becomes available, it is brought to the Castro Valley Library. So keep your eyes peeled for that when this actually appears at the uh, Castro Valley Library because this is the student press. And I love, that, I love reading this newspaper. Um, these students are uh, the stars of the future when it comes to journalism and whatever field that they choose. This publication right here is just top notch. I love reading it. I love the fact that it's, it's student free press. Um, I'll give you a couple uh, story headlines that are in this edition, but um, contact the Castro Valley High School uh, Journalism Department and you can actually subscribe to this publication. It does cost money but it is money well spent because you're investing in the future of um, our up and coming journalists at Castro Valley High. Uh, come, some of the headlines here. Of course, this is their senior edition because it's uh, the last edition with all the seniors that are graduating. But here's a couple stories. Uh, students are talking about TikTok, about the, the ban and the controversy about the, the popular social media app. We've got some information about cheerleading program at the high school. That's rather interesting. What I really liked is, um, and I apologize, I'm just like turning this in your face right here. What I really liked about this edition was there were some stories and uh, profiles about some of the retiring teachers, some of these wonderful teachers. I've known Jeff Vendicell for a lot of years. He's a photography teacher. He's retiring this year. Uh, sad to see him go. He's a wonderful guy. I've seen him uh, at the homecoming parades on uh, Redwood Road a lot. So if you're out and about, check this out. It's usually at the library, um, the Castle Valley Library. Also, you can reach out to uh, the journalism class at Castle Valley High. Just look up the phone number, send them uh, an email, or leave them a voicemail. You, you can subscribe. It does cost a couple bucks, but like I said, it's definitely worth the price of admission when it comes to uh, student reporting and stu student student journalism. Hey guys, I apologize for not mentioning mentioning this sooner, but you do have a few days for this uh, to plan ahead. This uh, weekend is the big Castro Valley Car Show. It's going to be Saturday uh, from 12 to 5 p.m. This is a wonderful event. It's put on by the Castro Valley Rotary Club here in Castro Valley. Uh, shout out to those guys. They are wonderful people. Uh, the majority of the organization of this event, a lot of it, a lot of the organization of this event is done by uh, Dolphin Graphics. And they are also uh, part of the Rotary. So there you go. It's going to be the car show. Save the date. Mark it on your calendar right now in bright pen Saturday, June 17th, 2023. Yes, that's this weekend, but you have plenty of time to plan ahead. And yes, the boulevard will be closed for this event, but it is free. There'll be music, there'll be food, there'll be wonderful stuff, all sorts of amazing stuff. 
Uh, let's see. So do make note that Castro Valley Boulevard will be closed between Redwood and San Miguel for this event. Again, that is this weekend. I apologize for not being um, more on top of this, but yes, this Saturday is the big car show. Hey, the Catch the Real Estate Bug will be there. That's the 1969 beautiful green Volkswagen Bug owned by Ross and Paulette. Tanya is in the house. Tanya is at the reverse boycott. Uh, Tanya says it is invigorating. There really isn't any other word. Tanya, I wish I could be with you. As you know, I'm a huge A's fan as well. Uh, born and raised, my my blood is, is, is green and gold for Ricky Henderson. But last call here. The Castro Valley Car Show is this weekend, June 17th. It's coming up, uh, 12 to 5 p.m. Be mindful of the road closures for that event. And uh, since we're talking about car events, yes, yes. August 26th from 6 to 10 p.m. is going to be our event, Castro Valley Cruise Night. No road closures for this event at all. Uh, this event is Huge, and I'm not just saying it because I am one of the organizers. I'm saying this because this event is immense. I think last year we had close to uh, a lot of people were guessing conservatively over a thousand cars and tons and tons of people. Um, if you like classic cars, absolutely positively hit up the car show but if you like seeing them drive and hearing them drive and smelling them drive please check out cruise night that's coming up in august it's the 26th from 6 to 10 p.m uh kathy thank you for the 500 stars this is kathy's where do i have kathy this is kathy's 59th week kathy you are just in time for me to tell you again Castro Valley Cruise Night is coming up August 26, 2023, 6 to 10 p.m. We will be out there. We will have a wonderful DJ playing oldies like we did last year. We will be in the parking lot of Tire Choice next to Safeway. We will have t-shirts for sale. We'll have freebies. We'll have fun stuff. CHP will be there giving stuff out. We will have all sorts of fun stuff. Again, Castro Valley Cruise Night, August 26 from 6 to 10 p.m. Like I said, last year was bonkers. There were over a thousand cars parked and cruising, hundreds of thousands of people. It was nuts. We do plan this the same weekend as Good Guys Finals in Pleasanton so that we can attract those wonderful, beautiful, amazing cars and a lot of them come to cruise night. It's amazing. My jaw dropped when I saw how many cars and people were there. Um, yeah, it's a blast. Uh, yes, John's car was there last year. I saw you cruising, John. Yes. And I've been advised that Ricky is in the house. Good evening, Ricky. Hope you're doing well. Like I said, we do have a caller. We have a guest coming in at uh, 7 30 which is right now and hopefully our wonderful guests did not forget i sent them a reminder if they forgot that's okay we'll bring them in next week but like i said we do have a guest scheduled for 7 30. if not we will uh we do here's our guest uh tonight's guest is julian he is the owner of seven hills bakery good evening julian thank you for joining us Sorry about last week. My internet went wild, and uh, it, it just it just would not have worked if we tried to do this. Everything was dropping. So um, I want to extend my appreciation and humble gratitude for your, your patience and understanding. Oh, no problem. Yeah. So if you're just tuning in, uh, this is Julian Wagner. He is owner of Seven Hills Bakery in the Marketplace. And uh, we want to talk about... Uh, your business, a little bit about the marketplace and, you know, what you're doing. And I, let me start off the conversation thanking you again for, for, um, um, for your time and your patience. And I think one of the um, prompts for us having this conversation is people know about the marketplace, 
but people may not be familiar with the businesses that are in the marketplace that are you you guys are your own businesses you're not part of the marketplace correct and and talk to me That's right talk to me a little bit about that what is your what, what would you like people to understand regarding that that whole well you know we um the marketplace is really uh, a special and unique uh shopping experience um you know it's it's more than just the marketplace as one you know one whole business but it's really a sum of many parts um we, we all have uh, unique uh stories and histories um you know that that, that got us to where we are today um and it really started with the uh the, the alameda marketplace in alameda and um i uh i was um i was the uh production manager at the Philadelphia bakery for 11 years um, in the alameda marketplace and that's where i met donna labor who uh, is kind of spearheaded the, the whole uh concept and uh and brought it to capture valley and um so when the opportunity came for us to uh, to, to open up shop in Castro valley i jumped at the opportunity her and uh, Dave over at the Barron's Meat Market. Um, you know, I've worked with them for uh, 11 years. I've known them now for about 16 years. So uh, it was just a, uh, it was a no-brainer uh, to come over and, and, and be a part of this project. That's awesome. Um, I want to just jump right in here and explain to me your passion for bread and baking. That's what I want to know about. Oh, well, you know, that, that, that goes back pretty pretty far. Um, I, I was originally born in Paris, France, and uh, my family moved to the United States, uh, Connecticut specifically, uh, when I was about five years old. And um, and I just had this memory of when we first uh, immigrated to the States, and my parents you know, saying there was uh, good time for bread and good pastries, and of course all of that has changed uh, coast to coast and you know, anywhere in between. And um, but that was a, a memory that stuck with me and it's also um, I have one of those um, those memories as, a, as an obviously a very young child uh, in France going into the bakeries and, and experiencing that smell that smell I just can't I can't mm -hmm. get it out of my mind and so um, you know I I just I don't know it just holds a really uh, a special place in my, my soul um, to be able to recreate that and now for other kids we see so many kids coming in and seeing the excitement in their faces when the eyes light up when they get in front of the pastry case. Or, uh, we have a, a lot of European uh, customers who just uh, truly appreciate the craftsmanship of the, of the bread and the pastries. Um, but the, uh, but it's you know it's 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 hard to find. Um, it's hard to find. There, there's plenty of bakeries like like ours, but it, but it's hard to find good quality bread um, that uh, is. Uh, that is made with uh, slow fermentation. Um, and, you know, this, in this society, we tend to rush everything. And, yeah. You know, what we do is nothing. It, it's nothing special in that. Like, just we use simple ingredients and we take our time. And, and, and that's that's really the, the, the magic right there. And people ask me, how do you get it to taste like it does in France? And, and what I do, just like they do in France, we just take our time. <laughs> I didn't know you were born in France, so man, I, I, so you know bread. Wow. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been part of my part of my life as long as I can remember. That's awesome. What are your most popular items? Uh, I think hands down our, our butter croissant, chocolate croissant, um, and then the, uh, the the French baguette. It's, uh, they're again they're they're simple. Um, you know the, the 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 simplicity is actually what makes it more challenging uh, to to create. Uh, the French baguette, for instance, it's it's flour, water, salt, and yeast, and um, there's no uh, salty olives to hide behind. There's no chocolate. There's no herbs. There's no cheese. It's just it, you're you're tasting the fermented flour, and that's it. And um, so I think people really appreciate that that it's, it's simple yet it has this uh, this amazing sweetness to it without the addition of any sugar or sweeteners. Um, it just comes from the from the fermentation, so I'd say those are those are, are, are definitely our, our most uh, our most popular items. Uh, listener said the bread is great. Um, that was John Ross says love the epi and 
Koigen. Did I say that right? Uh, Queen Amon. Queen Amon. There you go. Oh, that one. That one is, uh, that one's a, it, people struggle with that. And uh, the reason being is that the Queen Amon spells K-O-U-I-G-N-A-M-A-N-N. Yeah, he spelled it right. <laughs> I just, a, I just. A Celtic, uh, Celtic word. Ooh. Um, it so, comes from the, uh, the, the northwest uh, region of France known for its butter production. And um, you, oh, it's one of those you cannot look at it while you say it. Okay. <laughs> the queen, like the queen. Okay. And Amon. And, and, and just leave it at that. So is it, so is it a sweet bread or is it? Is... It's, so it translates to butter cake. Okay. Um, traditionally they were made larger. Style butter uh, folded into it. That's what gets us those nice flaky layers. But the Queen Amon has 48% salted butter. And we also add sugar in between the layers. So as we fold it, we're adding sugar and the salted butter. And um, just this just creates this magical pastry that's uh, it's light, it's rich, it's crispy, it's uh, almost custardy at times inside. And, um, yeah, people kind of go gaga for that as well. Sounds amazing. Getting back to um, kind of the, the kinship that you have with other folks at the marketplace, since you guys have known each other for so long, what is kind of like your um, philosophy in regards to to just being in business here in Castor Valley and explain, I, I know you can't speak for Donna, but what kind of attracted you to this, the, the marketplace to open here in Castor Valley? Well, so when, when I, uh, I moved to actually San Leandro uh, in 2010. And so we started exploring the area and um, we came across Castor Valley and Castor Valley actually reminds me a lot of the town that I grew up with. Then, so Castro Valley has its poultry history. Uh, the town I grew up in, in Canaan, Connecticut, is uh, it's a dairy farming town. Uh, it's actually a lot smaller than, than Castro Valley, but the soul, the small town feel that Castro Valley has, reminds me a lot of Canaan. Um, and I remember, I remember saying uh, to my wife that you know this this town you could use a bakery. And um, so when the the, the project uh, that I initially had nothing to do with the, the, the project and the marketplace uh, started. Um, I was I was asked to, to join, and, and of course I was familiar with Castro Valley, and it sounded like a great place to open a bakery. Um, you know, I, my my philosophy on on, on bakeries is that um, the, the the bakery should belong to the community. Um, you know, whatever community that is, whether it's you know Pleasanton, Castro Valley, Paris, you know. Whatever, um, but that that bakery truly belongs to uh, the community, the customers, uh, the staff that works there. Uh, I'm I'm an employee, just like anyone else at the at the bakery. I really want that feel uh, to to come across to to anyone that shops with us. That you know, you, you come in regularly. We will get to know you. We will get to know you by first name. We'll get to know you what your order is. Um, and that's uh, that, that's always been important to me um, because it should really become any bakery should become like a, like a social hub uh, for any any community. It's a great place to meet. It's a, it's a great place to socialize and, uh, and of course indulge. Uh, speaking to community, do you ever get sp uh, special requests, and do you respond to those? And and what have those requests been? Yeah, we get uh, we get a fair amount of, of special requests, and um, for those of you who shopped with us early on, you probably remember our, our shelves were pretty bare. We had uh, we started off very minimal with a very minimal selection, um, and part of that was due to the fact that we were grossly understaffed when we started. But also, I wanted to hear back from the from the community what what does Castro Valley want. Um, my personal preference may not be. Sells in Castro Valley, and um, you know I wanted a lot of uh, a lot of whole grain breads. Uh, we do a fair amount, but they're not. Other than the rye breads, I'd say our, our whole grain breads are not our most popular. Um, but um, we, you know, 
So we get requests a lot. Um, great example, um, since day one, I think people have asked, uh, are, are you going to offer a, uh, an olive bread? And I said, yes, I will make an olive bread. But I really wanted it to be, I wanted it to work in production, but I also wanted it to be special. And um, so we just recently, in the last couple of months, I think, uh, rolled out uh, an olive loaf, an olive sourdough. And uh, what makes it different from our regular sourdough is that we add uh, a little bit of cornmeal and herbs, and we also preserve our own lemons. And so we dice a little, a little bit of uh, preserved lemon peel in there, and uh, gives it a little bit of a North African uh, kind of flair. That sounds good. Uh, yeah, and so, you know, if I hear the request enough um, by a, a lot of people, I will definitely take into consideration. Uh, it has kind of fit into the soul of the bakery as well. Yeah, you can't respond to every single one, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. right, yeah. you got to draw the line somewhere. Right. Hey, uh, Rochelle just posted up. She said every time she gives someone a pastry from your shop, people ask for her to bring some over chocolate croissants or to die for. Bless you, sir. You are very talented. So there you go. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, do you bake at home, and what, what are you baking at home? I, I'm sure it's probably kind of a, a, it might be a fine line to divide work from home, but I'm curious to know, what are you, what are you baking at home for, for yourself and your family? Um, if, if anything, it's going to be pizza. Okay. You know, my, uh, my, my wife and children bought me a, a, a beautiful pizza oven for Father's Day last year. Um, while they probably tell you that I don't make it enough, uh, <laughs> that's, that's about the extent of my baking at home. Okay. Um, however, you know, in preparation for opening the bakery, uh, we essentially had uh, Seven Hills 0 0.5 uh, in my garage. Um, I had the, the dough sheeter and a mixer in my garage, and I was testing out recipes and, and, uh, and just you know, gifting it to my, to my neighbors. And, um, and, but every day I was making those croissants and scones and muffins. And, and uh, bread is a little bit more challenging at home. Good bread oven is uh, is really uh, crucial for the style that we do, uh, mainly because of the steam injection. And uh, but uh, but yeah, no, I don't I don't bake at home. Uh, my, my my daughter loves to bake with me. She uh, she goes to the bakery. You might see her there sometimes. Uh, works up front. Sometimes she comes in the back. We were making panna cotta together last night. Mm. Uh, now nice. that we have a you know a, an actual production kitchen, I don't worry about you know spilling a little flour. Or, sugar on the floor we can, speed it up. we can speed it up at home it's a little different so were you always interested in uh cooking and culinary arts or did you just get into it because you you just you were raised with the the olfactory reaction of of breads forever uh well both actually I okay mean, so it's so yes i definitely had uh, those olfactory uh, you know senses and 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 those, those, those memories, but, um, you know, around uh, 14 years old, I, I got to the point, my, my, my parents were both, uh, you know, working middle class, uh, my dad often had uh, two jobs, and um, I got kind of tired of bumming money off my parents to go to movies with my friends or do things, and so, um, you know, ironically, my dad ended up buying a, um, he bought into the Pepperidge Farm franchise, uh, uh, selling bread. Uh, oh, wow. you know, supermarket bread. Uh, he had a pepper farm truck, and, and I would go with him uh, on you know school holidays or whatnot, and, and deliver to the restaurants and supermarkets with him. And uh, one day I asked him, "Hey, would you ask you know one of the chefs if I can get a job washing dishes?" And he said, "You know, why don't you come along with me? You can ask the chef yourself." And uh, so that's what I did, and I got into this little restaurant called the Inn in Falls Village. Uh, it was a I had a dining room and a Bar, uh, and a bit of a bar scene, again, tiny little town. Uh, but I started washing dishes, and I, and I met this other kid uh, that was a year or two older than me, and he started talking to me about culinary school, and I was like, what's that? And he said, well, it's where you go to learn to be a chef. And I was like, yeah, you really do that? <laughs> and so I kind of started, you know, picking the brain of the chef, um, who, um, I mean, this is like old school, you know, they used to smoke in the kitchen, and uh, you know, put the cigarette butt in the salmon's mouth and, you know, joke about smoked salmon and all that stuff. <laughs> we, don't, we don't want to hear it these days, but, um, but so it was slowly sort of getting these tasks, you know, meat and potatoes and onions and carrots. And, um, you know, one day he, um, I, I, I was getting a little, uh, I was getting a little cocky and, and I came in and I said, okay, what do you need me to do? So he said, turn around, come back to that door, say hello to me and shake my hand. I said, oh, okay. So, uh, so I came in. Just 
that is that I don't start the day without a hello and a handshake. And that really stuck with me. And because everybody liked this guy, right? And he, I mean, he commanded respect in a way that, like, he earned it, you know. And, and um, I said, yeah, I want, I want people to look up to me like that. And um, so it just stuck with me. And I, and I did enroll in culinary school. Um, and rather than go directly out of, uh, I was, I was enrolled to go to uh, uh, the Culinary Institute of America in Hyde Park, New York, uh, which is the top school for culinary arts, or at least it was then. Um, a lot more options these days. And, um, and I, I took a year off, and I worked in Boston in a three-and-a-half-star Italian restaurant, and uh, I started noticing uh, guys coming in for, for their internships from the same school, and they just had the deer in the headlights look, and they were no more prepared than I was. And so I'm 18 years old, um, getting my butt kicked every night, but you know these guys were too, and they, they, they were going to school that I was supposed to be you know, attending the following year. And so after a conversation with the chef, uh, you know, he said, look, you know, if you have the means to pay for school, then by all, by all means do it. You know, it's, it's a great experience, but this is a career that you can uh, go far in just by, just by working for the best you can find. And so that's the path I chose. I, 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 I went through my, my application, and I just started working for the best restaurants I could find. And uh, eventually that cook, I was cooking at the time. Uh, cooking led to an interest in baking. So. Uh, Michael says he makes the most awesome French toast out of the oat bread loaf. Uh, says oh, yeah. it says it's only available on Tuesdays though. So um, yes, we do have a rotating uh, rotating schedule uh, specials every day. The new special. What are, um, What are the specials? Uh, so Monday we offer a honey rye, which is a fifty percent uh, rye bread. Um, it's uh, it's Dense without being heavy, uh, makes great toast, sandwiches, uh, you know, good, good shelf life. All of our, our, our rye breads are uh, sourdough based with a little bit of yeast added to it. Um, Tuesday is the oatmeal and bread, but we have also added a caraway rye, uh, which we have, uh, we have a very strong uh, following. Very few customers actually really like it, um, but they are. Persistent. <laughs> okay. And, um, it happens to be one of my favorites too, and so I was like, okay, we'll, we'll bring it on, see how it does. Um, we brought it on early before we had the bread slicer, and uh, it didn't do very well, so we took it off. And then now people say, well, now you have a bread slicer, we need you to bring it back. So we also offer that on Tuesdays. Uh, Wednesday is the uh, walnut rye, uh, which is uh, a, a, a all whole grain bread. There's no white flour. Uh, it's a thirty percent rye. Uh, the whole walnuts, and we hydrate it entirely with apple cider. And the apple cider kind of takes the edge off of the off the off the rye, and it does something really cool with the walnuts too. We toast the walnuts uh, before they go into the mix, and then they kind of suck up all that apple cider. So they they, 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 they take on a, a nice sweet flavor. And um, you know, walnuts can be a little bit astringent, and uh, the, but the cider takes care of that. Um, Thursday we have a uh, Swedish limbug, Dale's Swedish limbug to be uh, exact, and Dale is a, a, a dear friend of mine from Castro Valley who's uh, 93 years old, and uh, we've known each other for years, and he's always asking me for the best on my uh, Swedish uh, Swedish limbugs, and um, so in, in honor of Dale, we brought on Swedish limbug, thinking it, 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 again this is one of the special rise it's spiced with uh, anise and fennel mm. and orange and molasses so it's kind of got this like licorice uh, flavor and I didn't expect it to actually be so popular but we, we generally sell out every every Thursday um, and then Friday we have our braided challah which is our Jewish egg bread and then uh, Saturday we offer the walnut rye again because it's, it's that popular that it gets two days and then Sunday we uh, we have a, a cinnamon raisin. Uh, it's a really beautiful, uh, enriched bread, uh, really light and fluffy, and it's great toast. French toast would be great for that. Um, and, uh, and and all of our breads have uh, a, 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 either, you know, a varying amount of, uh, of whole grain flour. So even our uh, our cinnamon raisin bread is going to have some whole grain flour. So are you constantly studying and looking for new approaches or innovations in baking? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I like to 
I like to say that I'm not stuck in my ways, although I'm sure some people that would, that would get the bakery would, would disagree. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I, I think it's important to, to, to constantly educate and re-educate yourself. And a lot of that comes from the staff, actually. Um, you know, what may have worked for me in Alameda does not necessarily work here in Castro Valley, whether it's uh, you know, change of equipment or change of production flow. But um, I do try to attend classes and seminars. Um, a great place uh, that I've been going to for years across the Bay is the San Francisco Baking Institute. And while I've never had enough time to do a full curriculum, uh, I do take a, a week-long workshops and, uh, and, and go over there. And, and it's, it'll be a focused workshop on, you know, Viennoiserie, which is the technical name for the, for the pastries that we make with all the high levels of butter, or if it's, uh, I took a German, uh, German breads class once, whole grain breads, um, and anything I can do really to learn, uh, you know, to learn more about uh, the ingredients and the craft, and what's great is that they bring in instructors from all over the world. Uh, it's not just their, um, uh, their, their staff instructors, they'll help them bring in bakers from Germany, uh, from France to teach these, these workshops. Uh, since you have background not just in baking, but in general uh, kitchen cooking, what is your favorite thing to make and, and eat? Oh, God. That's, that's a really tough question. You know, I'll, I'll be honest. As far as, like, eating, uh, I, I'm not that picky. You know, I, 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 I love, like, I love super high-end food, too. As, as much as I love a, a good handful or plateful of Oreos, uh, <laughs> I, I mean, I just, I'm just, there's just nothing better than an Oreo cookie. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, um, so, um, as far as what I like to eat, you know, these days it's, it's, it's tough because cooking is, is, you know, cooking at home has taken on a, a totally different um, vibe. It's, it's, we're, we're in survival mode. Yeah. <laughs> And it, dinner on the table it, it, it takes, yeah, it takes time, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Um, what do I like to cook? Uh, something simple. I, 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 don't, I don't follow recipes. Um, you know, I... I, I they're guidelines. They're, exactly, they're, they're guidelines. They're, guidelines. I mean, I, I, they're suggestions. I'm sorry? They can be suggestions, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, but, um, so, you know, I, I grow a lot of vegetables and herbs in my garden, and so... Anything that I can use in the in, in the in the garden to kind of help uh, accent what you know what we have, like a lot of families we eat a lot of we eat a lot of chicken. Um, it's you know it's it's a healthy protein. And, it's and, very uh, versatile too. And it is, it's versatile exactly, and so um, you know I like uh, I like a lot of a lot of acidity in my food, whether it comes from lemon juice or vinegar or capers um, herbs. I'd say I'd say I have a, a very uh, Mediterranean uh, approach to. Way I cook at home, um, you know, I, I love using a lot of butter. I don't need a lot of butter. <laughs> Ask me not to use so much butter, um, but you know, with the uh, with Empor and Nueva right across the, the, the way from us too, uh, the olive oil is uh, is uh, I, it, it's, it's opened my eyes to uh, the versatility of olive oil as well. Um, so um, yeah, so try try to eat a little healthier these days. Um, also like to go out a lot. Um, I like to not cook. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, you know, like you had mentioned before, there's so much truth in the fact that food are, foods are just tied so directly to our memories of, of, of growing up and, and, and can bring us um, images of, of our loved ones. It's, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, I, I, um, yeah, be, because of those, those those childhood memories, I I, I, I really strive to, to, to strike those those chords with, with with other people. If I can if I can bring somebody back to a time when they were younger and carefree and like you know and, and just have that moment, um, whether it was like this reminds me of sitting at my grandmother's table or this reminds me of a picnic I had when I was little. Um, you know, I have so many of those that, like, it's just, it's, the, 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 that feeling is irreplaceable. Yeah. And, um, and it's just, like, just for that, for that one moment, you just, you have not care in the world, you're not worried about bills, you're not worried about a 
the stresses of life and your child again. And, and for me, only food has been able to, 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 to get that feeling. It's pretty, um, it's pretty magical. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. I'm, I was just thinking of uh, one of the things that, that does that for me is like the taste of a really good vegetarian minestrone. You were bringing me back to childhood memories of Banchero's, Banchero's and they've been closed for such a long time. It, it, it's really remarkable how that, that, that works and it, it, how awesome it is for you to do that almost every day, to smell those smells and taste those tastes of your childhood. Yeah, I mean, you know, we, we, I'm glad I hear it a lot. Like, it was like, oh, it smells so good in here because we're nose blind. Um, when we, we work, we're surrounded by the smell and the taste. And, and honestly, you're kind, you're kind of used I to it. Something from the bakery, I take it home to taste it because it tastes totally different to me. Um, and when uh, I go into the bakery a little bit later these days, so I get to experience a little bit more of what the customers experience walking through the door. The baking has already started when I when I walk in, but early on. I was, you know, opening the door in the morning and just starting at the ovens. I, I was getting none of that, so it's great to it's great to, to experience a little bit of that. Uh, That's awesome. How cool it is for you to be able to do that and, and kind of not kind of to actually pass on your passion and and your love to your customers through those memories. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'm um, pretty lucky. You very lucky. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else that you wanted to bring up, or um, I know we've, we've, we've ate up, burned through quite a bit of time and we probably have other things to do, but if there's anything that I did not mention that you, or qu did not ask that you would like to mention, have at it. Um, I just, you know, if you haven't come in to the, to the uh, Castro Valley Marketplace, please come visit us and, and, and all the other vendors uh, in, the, in the marketplace. We have uh, lots of great, uh, passionate, business owners with, with great stories, um, you know, a lot of local uh, local business owners, uh, you know, Debbie over at the cannery and Nate Bradley and, and, uh, and Flora Nueva and, and, um, and, you know, just come in and get to know us and, and you're going to hear some pretty wild stories. Um, I think one thing that um, is really cool, um, one of many cool things about the, the marketplace that people may not uh, know is that we have bees up on the roof. Um, we, uh, and this is, you know, Donna will get her chance to talk about it. Sorry, Donna, but uh, I'm going to spill the beans here. We have, uh, we have beehives up on the roof and, and, uh, every, uh, few months we have a, the, a beekeeper comes in and he spins the, the, the combs and, and, and we sell the Castro Valley honey right there in the marketplace. It's, uh, it's a really, really neat thing. That's awesome. It's also good for your, your immunity to, uh, to, uh, digest honey that's local. Yes. So, and also, since you're mentioning all the businesses in the marketplace, I wanted to give a shout out to um, Night Owl. We were there not too long ago, and they, they are awesome. And also, Pizza the Bay. Um, the buzz around them is 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 legit. They're good. They got good stuff. Nice. That's, yeah. That's that's great to hear. They're 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 pretty new to the marketplace, and of course we. Want, we want everyone to do well, so and and, uh, and, and bring a little nightlife to to Castro Valley that I know a lot of people crave. So yeah, thank you so much, Julian. I appreciate your time and I appreciate you sharing your story. And I, I like we had uh, discussed a little bit before, uh, prior, just to let people know that there are passionate individual business owners at the marketplace, just just rocking and rolling and and plying their trade. Um, and sharing their passion for food. And thank you for sharing that tonight. Thanks for having me, Roberto. I really appreciate it. Right on, Julian. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So if you're just joining, that was uh, Julian Wagner. He is uh, the proprietor of Seven Hills Bakery in the Castro Valley Marketplace. Um, like I said at the end of the conversation there, um, we're all kind of familiar with the Castro Valley Marketplace. We know it's this big, beautiful building, and, and it's a marketplace. But I think what a lot of people may not know is that in that marketplace, there are a number of wonderful, amazing, passionate people, like I said, um, you know, sharing their passion and love for food at their businesses. And they are independent business owners. So thank you again, Julian, for your time.
and for sharing um, all that information. I had no idea Julian was from Paris. That's awesome. Um, thank you again, Julian. Appreciate your time. It was, uh, I, I, I love, I mean, I love food. I'm a vegetarian. And if you know, if you're one of the few people who know my diet, <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's a joke among people because I just, I just love peanut butter and I eat peanut butter nonstop. Um, but I love talking to people about food. I love people who are passionate about food and especially that whole component where flavors and scents bring you back to special times in your past. Mom, hi, I love you. Mom baked um, uh, bread at home a few times. That brings me back. So um, thank you again, Julian. I appreciate your time. Let me get some water here. Let's, um, let's talk about, wait, 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 wait. Oh no, hold on. Uh, I wanted to bring this to your attention and also say hello to some people who call, who um, sent stars while we were talking to Julian. Uh, Janella sent a thousand stars. This is Janella's 46th week. Janella, I hope you're still listening. And John, thank you, John. John just sent 1,200 stars. Thank you, John. Appreciate your support. And hey, Jackson, hope you're doing well, my friend. Uh, Janella's 46th week sending stars, and this is uh, John's first time back, but John has sent numerous times, uh, sent stars numerous times. Thank you, John. Appreciate your support. And yes, if you guys are going to do a cash mob, just go see Julian at Seven Hills Bakery tomorrow. You'll be glad you did. Uh, Janella, if you are still listening, I forgot something here. Uh, Janella is going to be hosting a Castro Valley Eden Area Chamber of Commerce mixer. That is going to be Thursday, the 22nd of June. Don't miss out. Uh, I need to turn this around so I can read it to you. Save the date. Bring a raffle prize to promote your business. You can join Navira Colima in San Lorenzo as they will be the host along with Real Estate by Janella Anguiano of Century 21 Real Estate Alliance. They are looking forward to seeing you there. So Nevaria Colima is located at 15568 Hesperian Boulevard. That's in San Lorenzo. Please mark your calendars Thursday, June 22nd, 530 p.m. You can go meet Janella Anguiano. She is one of the wonderful people who supports this show and our magazine all the time. Again, Thursday, June 22nd. That's at 530 p.m. And the location is 15568 Hesperian Boulevard. Uh, this is a restaurant, I believe. I'm not familiar with it. I have to go and check it out. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Janella, for being awesome and for doing so much stuff to support our show here. With that said, uh, let's do a giveaway, shall we? And I have a ton of gift cards, so I will try to breeze through them quickly. But before that, I want to thank all of our sponsors for the magazine here. I'm going to go through this really fast. I hope I don't bore you with this. Thank you so much to Pete's Ace Hardware, one of Castro Valley's longest running businesses in Castro Valley. Thank you, Micaiah, for the 200 stars. Micaiah, you are awesome. This is Micaiah's... Where do I have Micaiah on the list here? No, I have it. 29 weeks, Micaiah, thank you so much for the 200 stars. Micaiah is the wonderful owner of Restore and Rework on San Carlos Avenue. If you're looking for vintage, one-of-a-kind items, go see Micaiah, San Carlos Avenue. Also, if you have old furniture that you want to ma have made beautiful and new and different, Micaiah's got a magic wand that is actually a paintbrush. She's awesome. Uh, Maggie just sent an additional 500 stars. That brings Maggie up to 550 stars. Thank you, Maggie and Micaiah. Thank you so much to David at Crossroads Specialty Foods. If you are looking for international foods, looking to expand your flavor horizon, go see David. He's got 5,000 items from dozens and dozens of countries. Thank you so much to CV San Castro Valley Sanitary District. They are the one of the Bay Area's longest running government agencies. They are located on Marshall Avenue. Oh, Maggie, yes, 600 stars. Thank you for the 600 stars. My math is off. CV San handles Castro Valley's recycling 
trash and water wastewater services thank you cb sand thank you to the leslie peterson team located on center street if you have real estate questions comments concerns uh, if you just want some information on the market go see leslie and her team they are located at one hold on 19633 Center Street. Thank you so much to Leslie Peterson. I promise you, I'm breezing through this really fast or as fast as I can. Thank you so much. Oh, here we go. Thank you to Maggie Castillo Jaima. She is your reverse mortgage specialist, lives in San Lorenzo, loves Castro Valley. Thank you so much, Maggie, for your continued support. Thank you so much to the Castro Valley School of Music. Thank you, Shane Sharkey, for your continued support. Castro Valley School of Music is located on Castro Valley Boulevard, right around the corner from Southern Comfort Kitchen. Thank you so much to Christy Pichot Real Estate. They are located in Pleasanton. They live in Castro Valley. They handle amazing real estate properties, ranch and large land lots. Check them out online or call them. You see the phone number right here in front of you. Thank you so much to you guys. Let's get to the Anytime Giveaway. Thank you, Bob, for the title of this. So the Anytime Giveaway works as such. There is a phone number that I give you. And here's the thing that I forgot tonight. So the Anytime Giveaway text line is 510-331-9112. So this is how it works. There's a trivia question, and the first person to provide the correct answer gets the gift card of their choice from the following businesses. And I've got a lot here, so I apologize. I will try to breeze through them as fast as possible. Valley Java, located on Stanton Avenue. Go say hi to Vince. Have some wonderful coffee. He's an awesome dude. Also, we have a gift certificate from the Castro Valley Natural Market in the Marketplace. Thank you guys for donating that. We have a gift card to Cafe Four, um, Three Cross Church. That's what the coffee spot that's up there. $20 to Cafe Rooney, located at the corner of Center and Higher. Delicious Mediterranean foods, and we're talking about food here. Hey, thank you, Julian, for the gift card to Seven Hills Bakery, located in Castro Valley Marketplace on the Boulevard. $20 to the Hallmark Store in the Village. More coffee. $20 to Pompas on Redwood Road, directly next to Trader Joe's. Hey, here's Micaiah's business right here. That is Restore and Rework on San Carlos Avenue. Hey, we've got $20 to Pete's Ace Hardware, one of Castro Valley's longest running businesses in our town. Hey, we've got $20 to, oops, that's upside down, sorry, to Night Owl. This card is good for $20 at the Night Owl, Pizza the Bay, or Occulto. So you can use that gift card if you win it at all those businesses. $20 of deliciousness to Rudy's Donuts. If you don't know Rudy's Donuts, okay, I'll tell you. They are on the boulevard. Delicious Donuts. They've been in business for many years. Wonderful people. Hey, we've got $20 to One Bad Apple Records. This is the business owned by Handsome Don. If you're looking for records, uh, CDs, DVDs, a uh, very handsome business owner. Go see Don. Hey, $20 to European Market on Redwood Road. All sorts of international deliciousness from Russia. You, they've got it. Call them up. See what they what they have to offer to you. $20 to Elevate Home Decor right around the corner from Al's Market. Go see Lynette and some of the wonderful gifts that she has there. Sorry, there's a lot of cards here and I apologize. Hey, a full month of unlimited Yoga at Castro Valley Yoga. Castro Valley Yoga is located on Castro Valley Boulevard. We've got $20 to Daily Dose. They have vegan treats, vegan foods, vegan um, supplements. Daily Dose 
had a storefront. In the Adobe Center, they do all of their business online now, www.dailydose247.com. Check them out. Free delivery to Castro Valley addresses. Wow, $20 to Crossroads Specialty. Like I mentioned before, they have close to 5,000 items from countries around the world. Go see David. He's an awesome dude. He's just a nice guy. He's got lots of international foods that are wonderful. Hey, holy moly, $20 to... Sorry, this is $24 to Always Yours Bakery Cafe located in the village. They have macarons and, and panna cotta and all sorts of other delicious stuff. Wait, there's more. $20 to Wen's Cafe. Shout out to Philip. Uh, Wen's Cafe is located on Castrodella Boulevard directly next door to the marketplace. Last but not least, a pet spa day for your four-legged friend at Classy Canine Wiggle Rumps located two doors down from Handsome Dawn. Classy Canine Wiggle Rumps is on Castle Valley Boulevard across the street from Pizza Ace Hardware. And I apologize, that's a lot of gift cards. Uh, a couple of those were donated. Quite a few of those were donated. A lot of them were purchased. Let me get a sip of water. Maggie says, a lot of options. Yes, we have options aplenty for the winner. So here we go. Again, all you need to do is uh, text me at 510-331-9112. And let me give you that number one more time. Did it disappear? So here we go. This is the Anytime Giveaway text line, 510-331-9112. The first person to text the correct answer to that phone number wins a gift card to the business of their choice. And here we go. I think you guys will get this one. This one's pretty easy, but it's a fun one. All right. Where in Castro Valley can you occasionally find the Batmobile? 510-331-9112 is the text line. First person to text me the correct answer will win a gift card to the business of their choice from that long aforementioned list. Let me give you the question one more time. Where in Castor Valley can you occasionally find the Batmobile? 510-331-9112. Uh, first guess is a wonderful guess, but it is not correct. Uh, uh, Crush Comics is a good guess, but not correct. Someone guessed T-Mobile, not correct. I give you the question one more time. Where in Castro Valley can you occasionally find the Batmobile? Um, the Taqueria, good guess, not correct. We have another guess, Golfland, good guess, not correct. Oh, Paulette, Paulette was determined to win. Paulette is correct. Uh, the correct answer is the car show, and yes, uh, for the past two years, the Castro Valley Car Show has had a wonderful replica Batmobile, and it looks super cool. It is the Batmobile from the um, Michael Keaton era, so it's, it's, it's that one. Congratulations, Paulette. Paulette was quick on that one. So, Paulette, let me know which gift card you would like, and I will um, make sure it finds its way to you. Let me give the question and the answer together. Uh, the location that you can occasionally find the Batmobile is, yes, the Castro Valley Car Show, which is coming up this Saturday from 12 to 5. Be there or be square. And Paulette has chosen $20 of wonderful gift items at Elevate home decor. Um, Paulette, say hello to Lynette for me. <laughs> and let me give a, another shout out to Micaiah because she's still with us tonight. Uh, Micaiah, thank you for donating some of these gift cards to your wonderful shop. Micaiah is the wonderful proprietor of Restore and Rework located on San Carlos Avenue. Like I said, if you're looking for vintage items, one of a kind stuff, if you are looking to have your vintage or old furniture made to look new and unique, you need to go talk to Micaiah because she works magic on 
furniture items, amazing. And and Micaiah is just awesome. She's just she's a sweetheart. So congratulations, Paulette. I'll have this gift card in your hands very soon. Probably sometime. Let's talk about scams, shall we? I got a juicy scam here for you guys. Yes, Janella says restore in the work. What a great shot. Um, I have a juicy scam here. Uh, this one is something that I saw on Facebook, and somebody posted this on a Hayward page. Uh, I don't have their name here, so I'm not going to be disclosing their information. However, someone received this letter, and again, if you're new to the show, every week there are scams that I uh, gather and dissect and scrutinize so that we can talk about them so hopefully more people will not fall prey to these scams. And a lot of these scams, like I would mentioned before, these scams are sophisticated. These scammers are pretty sh shifty and smart. I shouldn't say shifty because that's dismissive. These scammers are astute and savvy because the angles that they work are amazing. Let me just read this one to you. Uh, this comes on, this letter came on a somewhat official looking USPS letterhead right here. And this was an actual letter that was sent to someone. Uh, someone took a photo of it and posted it on a Hayward page and I, I, I swiped it because it just looked so uh, juicy. So this is a letter that says, um, this was dated June 5th. It says, regarding mail theft, Hayward, John's got to go. Have a wonderful evening, John. Best to you and Jackson. Take care. Uh, this says, on June 4th, 2023. So this, so, and the timeline here, so if there was a theft that happened on the 4th, this letter purportedly was just sent out the day later. But anyways... Let me read you just really quickly here. On June 4th, 2023, a mailboxes in Hayward, California were broken into. You're receiving this letter because you are one of the affected ones. The U.S. Postal Inspection Service is currently investigating this incident. Uh, so it actually would be the United States Postal Service. Uh, let's see. Most mail thieves are looking for financial documents such as checks, including outgoing checks and credit cards. If you believe you have suffered financial, financial losses due to mail theft, please complete the form on the reverse of this letter and provide documentation. Now wait for it. It gets better. Here's where it gets juicy. Uh, complete the form on the reverse of this letter and provide documentation such as bank and credit card statements, copies of checks front and back, etc. to us as soon as possible for follow-up investigation. The copy of a forged check or statement showing unauthorized credit use is the actual proof of a financial crime and is needed for prosecutive purposes. Please return the form and supporting documents to uh, USPS. Blah, blah, blah. Um, so this letter is asking for um, personal information to be sent to this USP, U.S. inspection uh, person. Um, these people are asking for credit card information immediately and cancel checks to be sent to this address. Scam, 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 scam. Um, like I said, um, these scammers and people who are fishing for your personal information to steal your money, they are sophisticated. They are smart. They are savvy. Um, if these individuals suspected that you had your checks stolen, they wouldn't be asking for other canceled checks or your credit card information. Um, and unfortunately, like we've discussed numerous times before, a lot of these scams and uh, phishing um, attempts, they really scare senior citizens. And this really pisses me off because um, older folks deserve to not be targeted for
for these scams. And what it does is, and like we've, we've discussed this a lot of times before, these scams really trigger your panic. You think, oh no, someone has stolen my money. I need to send this information to these people. I need to do this. I need to do that. And unfortunately, seniors tend to panic quicker and not pause to think. And a lot of the senior citizens um, in our community fall prey to these scams. And like I said, that really frustrates me because if you're gonna, um, it's just, it's despicable. That's all I can say without, I'm almost swearing here, so I apologize for that. I got another scam here that was, uh, I received as an email. Uh, good morning, my name is Mahmoud Aklan, attorney at law. Please, I write to request you help me receive my consignment box, which contains the sum of, here we go, um, $10 million for invest, investment in your country. I will provide you with more information as soon as I hear from you. Contact me privately. Uh, and here we go. So the return email address that I received was lawr at kme12.com. However, he is requesting that I email him at a different email address, which is something something at vivaldi.net. So what, what happens with a lot of these scams is people will say that they have a million dollars, $10 million for you in some account overseas. They ask you to email them, you email them back, what they will do then is they will ask you for $1,000 for processing, which sounds reasonable if you're going to get $11 million for $1,000 processing. What's going to happen is that these people are going to take your $1,000 and run. There is no $11 million anywhere for you, and you're out of the $1,000, $1,500, $200, whatever they're asking for. Don't fall for it. These scams, give me a moment. These scams get sent out numerous times a week. And you can do this if you have a Gmail account. Look in your spam folder. The likelihood that you've been solicited by numerous of these scammers is pretty high. Because a lot of these scams and, and goofy things that we talk about every week here, they're in my spam folder. And I just look through there and, and see a couple of the new ones or different ones and I bring them to your attention. And um, it, it stands to reason that these people would not continue sending out these emails if there hadn't been someone who actually fell for it. And I'm hoping the more that we talk about these scams and um, tomfoolery, for the lack of a better term, the more that we talk about them, the more aware we are of them and the less likely that more people will um, fall for them. With that said, that is just about the entire show that I have for tonight. I do not have any more things to discuss. I wanna thank so much Julian for calling in and letting us know more about Seven Hills Bakery and his passion for um, baking and uh, letting people know that the marketplace is that building, but what's really awesome is the business owners in the marketplace because they are independent people. They're independent of the marketplace. They are individual people with individual individual stories, individual passions, and um, I think it's cool to highlight those businesses to kind of differentiate them from the marketplace and let people know the individual stories and the individual passions because um, as a small business owner myself, you, you see my passion every time we do the show and every time a new magazine comes out. So um, with that said, Janella just sent another 500 stars. Thank you, Janella. That brings you to 1,500 stars. Janella, you're just, you're far too sweet. I appreciate you, Janella. You are awesome. If you don't know who Janella is, she is involved in the Castro Valley Eden Area Chamber of Commerce, the Rotary Club. She's just an awesome person. Uh, she is a realtor. She is with Century 21 on Redwood Road across from the BART Station. 
you have real estate questions or if you just want to go talk to someone awesome, go see Janella because she is awesome. Maggie just sent another 200 stars. That brings Maggie to 800 stars. Thank you, Maggie. You guys are awesome. Appreciate your support. Uh, let's, let me let you guys know uh, the people who sent stars. Tiffany sent 100. Thank you, Tiffany. Ross sent 25. Meredith sent 25. Paulette sent 200. Bob sent 50. Don sent 20. Maggie sent 800. Dennis sent 400. Katie sent 50. Eileen sent 200. Kathy sent 500. Janella sent 1,500. John sent 1,200. And Micaiah sent 200. Got to mention again, Tiffany is the queen of stars. She has sent stars 76 weeks. Dennis is the king of stars. He has sent stars 75 weeks. Thank you guys for being awesome. You guys make the show what it is. I'm just a goofy guy here mispronouncing words and trying to be funny. This has been episode 216. We do this show every Tuesday night. Um, unless Comcast is doing me dirty, <laughs> which happens from time to time. Next show, 217, is going to be Tuesday night. I'm going to have something amazing and special to share with you. You're, I, I'm, I'm proud of it. You're going to love it. It's, gonna, it's amazing. Congratulations to Paulette, who won the Anytime giveaway. She got $20 from Elevate Home Decor. Wonderful shop. If you are not familiar with Elevate Home Decor, you need to go to Elevate Home Decor. It's on Somerset. It is a caddy corner from Al's Market. You know where Al's Market is. Um, yeah, congratulations, Paulette. You are awesome. Thank you guys for making this show amazing. Like I said, without you, the show is nothing. And Chris, yes, I will see you at the car show. I will see you at cruise night. Thank you guys. Um, as always, if you're after getting all the honey, then you don't go killing all the bees. Be good to your neighbors.